today we start with the next chapter of ninth standard physics that is laws of motion now the laws of motion is divided into five parts so the whole chapter is got five parts the first part being related to the force that is the different kinds of forces because the motion is caused due to force so first of all we need to understand the cause of the force cause of the motion that is the force so we understand force in the first chapter first part in the second part we we'll learn the in the in fact in fact the subsequent parts we are going to learn the laws of motion so we got the first law of motion the second law of motion and the third law of motion and the fourth law which is also called as the gravitational law so these way that this in this manner there are going to be totally five parts of the chapter out of which the uh chapters of the second law and that of the fourth law will be having numericals in it so accordingly we will be having the videos of, uh, in this manner that we will be having uh, completing this whole part one by one so we'll come to the first part and that is the laws of motion which is related to force so of course the main thing understanding over here is why are we learning force in the laws of motion so the answer is very simple that motion is caused due to the force applied if there would not have been any force applied on the body then the body would have been at rest or at motion it would have not changed its position it would have not changed its state and hence we would have not got the motion at all so we not got any change in the motion hence force is that cause which is bringing about the motion hence we learn the force and the types of forces first and then we go ahead with the laws of motion so we are familiar with force when applied on a body can produce two main effects first is it can change the state of rest or of motion of a body that it can produce motion of the body so when a body is placed like for example if i put a duster like this then i apply a force it will make the body move it will make it slide and similarly if it is moving i can make it stop or i can change the direction of its motion so accordingly there will be the exertion exert uh, when i exert a force on a particular body it is going to move so there are so many examples over here so when like ball lying on the ground is kicked we exert a force a pull is exerted by the horse on the cart the pull exerted by the steam engine moves the train uh, the force due to gravity that is the earth's pull which is going to make the apple fall and the fielder on the ground stops a moving ball so all these are the application of forces due to which there is a change in the state in which the body is lying either in the state of rest to motion or motion to rest so when a force is applied on the pedal of a cycle on bicyclist the speed of the cycle increases a freely falling object continuously gains speed due to the earth's gravity uh, earth's pull acting along its direction of motion the speed of a moving vehicle is slowed down by applying the brakes a stone tied to one end of the string whirls whirl, uh, whirling at a constant speed in a horizontal circle change in its direction of motion continuously due to the force of tension in the string which acts normally on the direction of the stone so here if i take a stone and i tie it to a thread and then i take it and i swirl it like this at that time it is seen that the direction of the motion is going to change continuously because the direction of the motion is always be tangential so when it is moving like this the, the, at this point the direction is this way 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 and this point this way so you can see that when i'm swirling the ball like this or the stone like this at each and every point the direction of the ball is going to change uh with the uh, over here so we see that in a cricket tennis or badminton the direction of the motion of and speed of the ball is changed by hitting it in a direction other than its direction of motion 
So you must have seen many times that cricket or football, the bowler is bowling the ball, he bowls the ball here, and the batsman hits it just in front of him, uh, just behind behind him. So that's why it is changing the direction of motion. So similarly, the ball, uh, the uh, footballer kicked the ball to the goalkeeper, and the goalkeeper kicked it in another direction. So they have changed the direction of the motion of that particular thing. So player applies force with the hockey stick to change the direction and speed of a motion of the ball so you can see that force so these are the examples by which we see that the force is being applied so as to change the state of rest or of motion or of the direction of the motion so this is how the force is being changing the motion we also know that it can change the size and shape of the body. It can change the dimensions of the body. So here, if the body is a non-rigid body, okay, if the body is a non-rigid body, like for example, if I'm talking about this handkerchief, so this is non-rigid body. So when I apply a force over here, what is going to happen? It is going to change its shape and size. So which was like this, it has become a, like a ball. So I'll change the size of the body I have changed the shape of the body. So uh, that's how we can change the so force can also change the state of rest or, or uh, sorry, uh, it can change the shape or size of the body. So by loading a spring hanging from a rigid support, the length of the spring increases. So if you hang a spring and then you load that spring, the spring is going to extend. So you are increasing the size of the spring. By hammering a small piece of silver sheet, but thin foil uh, is made. Here the force increases the surface area. So when I am hammering a particular sheet, it becomes a thin sheet. So increasing the surface area. The steam pushing out from the pressure cooker occupies a large volume in the atmosphere. On pressing a piece of rubber, it changes shape. In a cycle pump, when the piston is lowered, the air is compressed to occupy a smaller volume. So note a force when applied on a rigid body does not change the interspacing between its constituent particles and therefore it does not change the dimensions of the object but, does, but <coughs> causes only the motion in it. So that's why I'm telling you that when a force is applied on a rigid body, what is a rigid body? A hard body, wherein when a body, like for example, if I'm talking this about this pen, I cannot change the shape or size of this pen. Why? Because it's a rigid body. It is the constituents, the molecules are tightly packed. So I do not have any chance of compressing it further. Hence, it's a rigid body. The only thing what I can do with force on this is, I can apply a force and make it move. Okay, I can only make it move, I can only create motion in it. Hence, this on a rigid body, when the force is applied on a rigid body, it is going to produce motion. When the force is applied on a non-rigid body, it will not produce motion, but it will produce a deep change in shape or size. So, on the other hand, the force when applied on a non-rigid body changes the interspacing between its constituent particles and therefore causes a change in its dimensions and can also produce motion in it. Thus, a force is that way. So now with this particular two things in our, our mind, we are going to define force. So how do we define force? A force is that physical quantity or cause which changes or tends to change. So it may change or it may just tend to change. It's not necessarily everything, every time it will change. It may just tend to change. Either the size or shape of the body or state of rest or motion of a body. So the force is that physical cause which changes or tends to change either the state of rest or change of uh, either the size or shape of the body or the state of rest or motion of the body. So you can see the force is defined at the, as that cause. Okay, so force is that physical cause which changes or tends to change the size or shape of the body 
or state of rest or motion of a body. That's the definition of force. Now we are going to see the different kinds of forces. So when we talk about the different kinds of forces, we know that the forces can be broadly divided into or we can say that it can be easily be given into two forms that is one is the contact forces and other is non contact forces okay so we can divide or we can say that the uh, it can be the force one sec So we can di differentiate the force into two types. One is contact forces and other are non-contact forces. Contact means you need to have a physical contact between the two. Only then the force can be applied. Okay. So even if you blow air and due to that if this is करके अगर ये मूव हुआ तो देर ऑल्सो इज अ कॉन्टैक्ट देर वॉज अ कॉन्टैक्ट बिटवीन द एयर एंड द ऑब्जेक्ट सो कॉन्टैक्ट फोर्स इज दैट फोर्स इन विच देर इज अ फिजिकल कॉन्टैक्ट बिटवीन द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ फोर्स एंड द ऑब्जेक्ट गॉट इट सो कॉन्टैक्ट फोर्स द फोर्स विच आर अप्लाइड ऑन बॉडी बाय मेकिंग अ फिजिकल कॉन्टैक्ट आर कॉल्ड एज कॉन्टैक्ट फोर्सेज सो कॉन्टैक्ट फोर्सेज आर द वन इन विच इज अ फिजिकल कॉन्टैक्ट टेकिंग प्लेस बिटवीन द ऑब्जेक्ट एंड द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ द फोर्स सो दैट इज कॉन्टैक्ट फोर्सेज नॉ दिस कॉन्टैक्ट फोर्सेज आर ऑफ मेनी काइंड फर्स्ट वन इज द फ्रिक्शनल फोर्स सो द फर्स्ट वन ओवर यर इज फ्रिक्शनल so whenever any body is going to be kept over here it is going to remain in that particular condition because of friction otherwise it is going to roll down it is the friction which is not allowing it to roll down and hence we see that when a body slides over or rolls over a rough surface a force starts acting on the body in the opposite direction so a force starts acting on the body in the direction opposite to the motion of the body along the surface in contact so when this is going to move this way there will be a force acting on this direction that is if this is going downwards there will be a force going upwards that force which is going opposite to the direction of the motion is the frictional force so this force this is called as a frictional force or force of friction when a book is placed on the table is and uh, and is pushed to the right the force of friction acts to, on the book towards the left so when i am placing it over here and moving it towards left the frictional force will act towards the right so this force resists the motion of the book on the table top so what exactly is the frictional force it is the resistive force it is a force which is going to resist the motion to take place okay so friction is a force which is going to be applied on the body by or by itself in the opposite direction to the direction of the motion and it is a resistive force which is actually opposing the motion to take place so if the frictional force is more than the force applied then it is not going to give you any motion at all like for example if i take a huge box and that huge box is kept on a particular uh, road and if i try to move it so the frictional force of that thing is so high high that i cannot move it on sun side and that's the reason it is going to remain as it is so frictional force is a resistive kind of force the second is a normal reaction force so second is normal reaction force so what is a normal reaction force normal reaction normal means perpendicular okay so when any body is placed there will be a certain amount of force which is acting downwards 
and there will be a force acting acted by the table like suppose this is the table and i am placing the duster on the table then what is going to happen the weight of the duster is acting downwards but there is some force of the table which is making it push upwards due to which this is an equilibrium that means this is in a point where it is neither going downwards nor going upwards so that's why the force which is acting downwards there is a resultant force which is a reacting force which will be in upward direction that is called as a normal reaction force so the force with which it is being pushed downwards normal to it means opposite to it that is perpendicular it will be the upward force so you can see that when a body is placed on a surface a body exerts a force downwards equal to its weight on the surface but the body does not move because the surface exerts an equal and opposite force on the body normal to the surface okay so body is going to give a surface equal and opposite force normal to the body this is called as a normal reaction force so when you hold a block of block of wood on your palm the block exerts a force due to its weight downwards on the palm and you have to exert a reaction force upwards on the block normal to the palm to keep the block in position so when i want to keep this in position the weight is acting downwards i need to give it upward force so that it remains over here to make it remain over here i need to give an upward force so that this doesn't fall down so that is the normal reaction force similarly the book exerts a force w weight of the book on the table downwards and the table top exerts an equal reaction force upwards normal to the top of the table so that is the normal reaction force we move next to the tension force applied through string to so tension through string tension through string now suppose i tie something and hold it okay i tie something and hold this over here you will have will you ever find that when i hold it over here the thread which i am using is going to be very loose okay or it will not be straight no you will always find whatever i hang it to it makes the string completely straight that means some kind so if i'm holding it over here some kind of force is being applied on the string so that force which is applied on the string due to the weight of the object the weight of the object is making it tighter so that tightness what we call on the string that tightness of the string is nothing but the tension on the string so the weight of the body is exerting a tension on the string in the upward direction so when i have got a string like this this is submitted to a support over here and i place an object tied to it so if i tie an object over here you will find that the weight of object is going downwards over here this is w and the tension to the string will be upwards so string will have an upward force as a tension and the weight will be the downward force uh, by due to gravity so when a body is suspended by a string attached to a rigid support the body due to its weight w pulls the string vertically downwards and the string in its stretch condition pulls the body upwards by a force which balances the weight of the body so string is going to make pull it upwards the body is going to pull it downwards so upward pull upward push by the thread and the downward push of the a uh, body is going to equalize and hence the body will be in equilibrium so this force developed by the string is called tension or the force of tension so the figure shows the two forces which are equal and opposite this is w is equal to t so w will be equal to t where w is the weight of the body pulling the string and tension t is developed in the string because of the weight so in the case of equilibrium w will be equal to t if we cut the string slightly above the body we see that the string moves slightly upwards with a jerk due to the tension in the string acting upwards and then falls down due to its own weight so when you cut it 
first it will go up a bit and then it will come down why it is going to go up a bit because there was an upward push that upward push was there so as soon as you cut that thing it is giving that upward push was just release they, they say tug of war me the big quick hits tha aur agar wo samne wala team usko chhod diya to kya hota they fall backwards seemly yahan pe cut kiya to ye thoda upar jayega okay so that is what happens when the uh, string is cut the next force over here is force exerted by spring so it is force by spring so we know that the spring is something which can be either going to be compressed or it can be stretched okay and the spring has got this particular ability that it will come it will try to come back to its original position so if this is the original size of the spring if i stretch it on releasing it comes back to that size if i compress it and i release it comes back to the size so the spring wants to retain its original configuration so that retaining its original configuration over is called as the restoring force okay so when it comes from the expanded point to a close point it is again restoring force when it is in a compressed form comes back to normal is again a restoring force so restoring force is there in the uh, kind of the uh, spring so that force we see over here that consider a spring with its one end fixed it is, and if its other end is either stretched or compressed the spring exerts a force f opposite to the direction of the displacement of its free end the magnetic force is directly proportional to the magnitude of the displacement jitna main usko khichunga utna force zyada jitna press karunga utna force zyada so that will be the same thing that how much is the displacement i have given if i compress is too much then the force will be very high if i expand it too much then the force will be very high okay so the displacement by the spring is equal to the force applied so that is nothing but the elongation or compression which has taken place this force is called as restoring force so this force which is being applied to extend the length or to decrease the length is called uh, and to and that uh, particular kind of force which is going to be applied at that time is called as a restoring force so we see that elongation or compression this force is called as restoring force a spring balance works on this principle so uh, that was about the restoring force now similarly a horizontal spring with two objects a and b attached to its ends in its normal form does not exert any force on the object stretched at its end but if the spring is compressed it pushes away each object with a restoring force at its end so if i got two objects and i connected a spring over here if it is just like this nothing is going to happen but if i compress it then when i release it it will just move it apart if i spread it it is going to bring it together so that particular restoring force is going to be there uh, over here so if we uh, if the spring is compressed it pushes away each object with the restoring force at its end while if the spring is stretched it pulls it in each uh, each uh, each object with the restoring force f at its ends in each case the spring has the tendency to come back to its original position that's the why it is called as the restoring force restoring means coming back to its original position so that's why a spring what we call it as the force of the spring is actually also called as the restoring force that means the tendency of the spring to come back to its original position so whether it is compressed it will expand if it is expanded it will come back to normal so in both the cases this is the restoring force which is causing this particular change in the springs the last one is the fifth one is force due to collision okay so whenever there is a collision taking place colliding bang so jab bhi कोई चीज बैंग होती है कोलिजन होता है तो दैट कोलिजन इज ऑलवेज गोइंग टू कॉज अ फोर्स टू बी जनरेटेड सो दैट पर्टिकुलर फोर्स व्हिच इज जनरेटेड ड्यूरिंग कोलिजन सो व्हेन दिस ऑब्जेक्ट इज गोइंग टू हिट दिस ऑब्जेक्ट देयर विल बी सम रिकॉइलिंग सो दैट विल बी दैट थिंग दिस इज कोमिंग लाइक दिस एंड आफ्टर हिटिंग इट कम्स टू अदर ऑपोजिट साइड्स द मोशन विल बी ऑपोजिट साइड इट विल डिपेंड अपॉन 
what is the momentum of the body but anyway right now we just understand that what is the kind of the force which is nothing but collision so when two bodies collide they push each other as a result equal and opposite forces act on each body these forces are the forces of action and force of reaction a body b while in motion collides with the bo moving body a and exerts a force a b on the body which is called the force of action at the same instant the body a also exerts an equal and opposite reaction force f b a on the body b as a result of these forces the two bodies move apart after collision so when a this is a this is b when a collides with b there is a force applied by a on b that is force a b which is the force of action so this is action force so when a colliding with b is an action force but when the a collides with b it is a stop over there what happens is this b gives a reaction force there is going to be a force which is called as a reaction force which is going to push this b by a so this push b by a will be the reaction force so action and reaction so that's why we see that over here that every this particular uh, kind of a thing is when collision takes place the collision is taking place at that time it is from one point to another point and there will be a reaction force in the opposite direction so as a result these forces of the body move apart after collision so after collision so after the collision takes place they move apart because of the reaction force which is taking place so these were the contact forces now we come to the non contact forces non contact forces yani those forces which do not require a physical contact to take place right the first and foremost example will be gravitational force does the earth come and catch you no it is the gravitational force which is invisible force you do not see any kind of a physical contact between you and the earth and still the earth holds you downwards <clears throat> so that is called the gravitational force so force exerted by the earth to pull the object towards itself is the gravitational force so in universe each particle attracts the other particle due to its mass this force of attraction between them is gravitational force so yeah it is not only the earth who is going to have the gravitational force each and every object each and every particle smallest particle in the universe each and every of them has a tendency to attract the other particles towards itself that particular attraction is called as the gravitational force the earth also because of its mass attracts all other masses around it the force on the body due to the earth attraction is called as the force of gravity or the weight of the body so we know that what is the weight of the body it nothing but the gravitational force acting on the body it causes motion in the body towards the earth if the body is free to move thus if the body force due to gravity uh, thus it is the force of gravity uh, uh, force due to gravity that makes the body fall when released from a height so when i release this thing on the height it is going to fall down because of the force of gravity the body also attracts the earth by an equal force but no motion is caused in the earth because its huge mass so yeah this body is also going to try to attract the earth towards itself but it is not going to happen because this mass is too less as compared to the earth but now when we compare the earth with the sun so sun's mass being much 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 larger than the earth that's why the sun doesn't come towards the earth but the earth goes towards the sun that's why when it is the reason that the earth's gravitational force is not sufficient to exp to attract the sun the sun's gravitational force attracts the earth so examples are a ball plays in the table starts rolling down from the table in uh, if it's tilted if the table is tilted the ball starts rolling down because it is exerted the uh, ground it uh, it is attracted by the earth if a body is thrown up in the air it goes reaches uh, and uh, to a height and then returns to the ground so if i put it upwards so yeah you can see it is coming back down because the at a particular height it goes up to a particular height till the time my force was sufficient for it to go up and then it is going to come back because the force is uh, going to <coughs> it is going to come back because of the gravitational force the coin falls down when it is released at the height so all these are gravitational forces so that was the first kind of non contact force gravitational force now the next kind of of the 
non-contact force is the electrostatic force. That is nothing but the static electricity. We know very well that when you drop two articles, two non-conductors, and we see that one will have a positive charge, other will be negative charge, and then the positive and negative attract each other. So two like charges are going to repel each other and two unlike charges are going to attract each other. These are the examples of electrostatic forces. So two like charges repel while two unlike charges attract each other. The force between the charge is called as the electrostatic force. This force acts between the charge object even when they are separated. So that's why even if they are separated, this pull is definitely going to be there. So that particular thing is nothing but the electrostatic force. So like you take a, when a comb is wrapped in dry hair, it gets charged. If this comb is brought near the bits of paper, opposite charge are, are induced on the bits of paper and they begin to move towards the comb. The motion of the paper bits, uh, paper bits is due to the electrostatic force of attraction exerted between the unlike charges of the comb and the paper bits. So you can see that the uh, taking a comb rub it on a dry hair and then you bring the paper bit so bits of paper start dancing you come near it so that is because of the electrostatic force the third one and the final one is magnetic force so magnetic force is the last kind of non-contact force so two magnetic poles we know very well that like poles of the magnet are going to repel and unlike poles are going to attract so the attraction of or the repulsion which is going to take place due to the poles of the magnet they are called as a magnetic force so two like magnetic poles repel while two unlike magnetic poles attract each other the force between the magnetic poles is called as magnetic force this force acts even when the magnetic poles are at separation so example when a pole of magnet is brought near the small iron nails without touching it an opposite polarity is induced on the nail and it moves towards the magnet. The motion of the nail is due to the magnetic force of the attraction exerted between the unlike poles of the magnet and the nail. So you can see in this way the magnet is going to attract the nails towards it and that is nothing but the magnetic force. So these are the three non-contact forces gravitational force, electrostatic force and magnetic force and the contact force is a frictional force, normal reaction force, tension through string force by spring and collision. Now this non-contact forces what we are there, they have got a special characteristic features. There are two very important characteristics of non-contact forces. First thing is that these non-contact forces are dependent upon the distance between the two objects. The further the distance between the two objects, the smaller is the force. Okay, So it is force and the distance is inversely proportional more the force will be more the distance lesser the force lesser the distance more the force so first one is it is dependent on the distance over here and second thing is gravitational force is the only force out of the three which is attractive in nature only attractive in nature whereas Electrostatic and magnetic both are attractive as well as repulsive. So in the non-contact forces, there is not only attractive force, but also repulsive force, which is present in electrostatic and magnetic. So we see the two things. The gravitational force is always attractive in nature, while the electrostatic force and magnetic force are either attractive or repulsive. And second is the magnitude of the non-contact force on the two bodies depends on the distance between or separation between them. It decreases with the increase in the separation and increases with the se separation decreases. It varies inversely as the square of the distance of separation. On doubling the separation, the force becomes one fourth. So it is distance, ke mein, it is square of the distance. So the gravitational force is going to be proportional to one upon distance square. Right? So if the distance is doubled, if the distance is doubled, the force will become one fourth. If the difference is tripled, the force will become one ninth. Got it? So it is square of the distance and inversely proportional. So more the distance, lesser the force. Lesser the distance, more the force. Okay, so these were the different kinds of force. So that was the first part of your chapter, laws of motion about the force.
थर्टी फोर क्या